Good day, dear friends. Uh, today is the 2nd of October. Uh, it's actually like 2 o'clock in the morning here. Uh, <laughs> can't sleep and uh, doing too much work. So I decided to uh, record this video because I haven't done one in a while, I know. Uh, I apologize. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, Iran finally kind of struck back. Uh, they launched about 500 missiles uh, into Israel. Now, consider first, they did this in response after Israel crossed uh, another red line and invaded, physically invaded, not just striking with missiles and massacring civilians, uh, invaded into Lebanon. And there were great big celebrations yesterday up and down in Israel that they've invaded into Lebanon by young people who are either too stupid to realize what just happened and that they're going to be the ones uh, pretty soon fighting, and if they're not already fighting, uh, <clears throat> more likely who do not remember uh, 20, uh, 2006 or think they're going to get revenge for 2006. That was when Israel went in piecemeal uh, and got its teeth uh, punched in uh, by Hezbollah. Now, if they're not going in piecemeal, they're, now they're up against a much bigger Hezbollah. True, they've taken out a large part of the, of the uh, Hezbollah's leadership, and they've done it because, frankly speaking, they don't give a damn how many people, <laughs> civilians they kill to get one guy. I mean, these are the, this is the country that leveled six residential buildings, killed probably thousands of people once they, were, uh, they get that rubble uh, taken out. To get one guy who's uh, Nazarelli, was sitting behind below that somewhere in a bunker uh, or somewhere around that area in a bunker uh, they're hitting with 2,000 pound bombs uh, buildings well if they hit them on top you know the, those top uh, stories are wiped out I mean the people there are dead uh, but that's at least most of the rest of the building will survive especially if it's like a 10 story building but what they've started doing the same thing they did in Gaza is they they're hitting uh, one to two of these bombs into the base of the building, which drops the whole building. And everybody that's in that building is dead. Uh, Hezbollah has been firing back. And what you'll notice, uh, first and foremost, and partially because you, you, you can say in defense that partially because Northern Israel is uh, depopulated right now, uh, but Hezbollah is primarily striking uh, military targets. Israel is primarily striking civilian targets. Whether or not there's a military around that area is always questionable. Uh, in the greater Israel these days uh, seems to be also southern Lebanon. So that this greater Israel project from the uh, river to the sea, as Netanyahu loves uh, to proclaim, uh, is seemingly growing. Uh, which way they're planning on growing that uh, up to Beirut. Uh, then they try to take another chunk of Syria, which just expand the war even more uh, into uh, Jordan. No, we'll live and see. Well, we'll live and see. As it is, uh, the uh, uh, the Arab governments around Israel, they all have a very big problem. Uh, Sisi is on very shaky ground. Uh, Hassan and uh, Jordan, his whole government quit, right? So he's barely holding on to power. Uh, and that's going to be two new fronts for the Israelis if, if or and when uh, the street wins. And the American puppets are gone. Uh, Assad, uh, I will give you a guarantee that when, when and if Israel gets very, very bogged down and is taking heavy casualties in uh, uh, Lebanon, uh, Assad will go for the Golan Heights to take them back because those are Syrian. Uh, that is a Syrian territory. Uh, dis disputed, uh, disputed only because Israelis are sitting on it. It's a strategic height. That's, uh, that's for sure. Uh, and it also allows either side to uh, more easily shell each other's cities uh, in the valleys below, the lowlands below. Uh, Beirut, you know, there's Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon, and then there's the Lebanese army, which is pretty much a joke. It's, uh, it's barely a police uh, force. And the Lebanese army retreated. No big surprise. And while the majority of the Sunni and the Christians, uh, these are mostly Orthodox and some Catholic Christians in Lebanon, do not uh, particularly support Hezbollah. Israel is now striking Beirut itself and into central Beirut now. Uh, today they start striking central Beirut. Those are Christian and, and Sunni districts. So they will be supporting Shiites uh, in Hezbollah because 
when your family gets killed, you want revenge. That's how that normally works. That's human nature. And the Israelis indiscriminately are massacring civilians. And they may be wanting to get one guy, but they're quite happy to take out a thousand civilians to get that one guy. And they've demonstrated it uh, over and over and over again. The old Mossad that used to be able to walk in, walk past a guy sleeping kids, take the guy out, uh, not waking his wife, has been replaced with uh, the new Netanyahu, we'll just snoop the whole city approach, uh, or take out the city block. Uh, and maybe get the one guy. But if we don't, oh well, they're not really human beings anyways that we're killing. Uh, if you listen to a lot of the Israeli Orthodox uh, uh, rabbis, you can look it up on YouTube, it's not very hard to find, they'll tell you all about how uh, they're the ones that have a human soul. Uh, all the other humans, they don't really have a whole soul. It's like a five-part soul. Animals have two parts. Uh, all the Goya have a, a third part, but only the uh, Israelis, they'll have the uh, fourth and fifth part, the, the full human soul. You're not really human, in other words. You're just like a, a very intelligent ape, uh, which is a Nazi, th that's exactly a Nazi ideology. Okay, so I probably won't be going to Israel after this video um, ever again, but that's the reality of it. That's the exact same thing with the Nazis preached uh, in Germany. The point is, being a Nazi is not limited to being German uh, or German ally. It's any uh, race is capable of that, and any race that takes the ideology we're genetically uh, superior, and you're not, and uh, you're an inferior, and we can do with you what we want. Uh, destroy you, enslave you, what, what you know, what, what we feel like. That is, uh, that, that is that approach, and whether or not you, you say, oh, because, you know, Jews are victims. Yes, they were victims. Absolutely, they were victims of uh, Nazi, uh, of German Nazi uh, uh, atrocities, just like the Russians were. But they are repeating the exact same ideology in Israel. I'm not again saying all Jews are doing this, far from it. Uh, quite a bit of the uh, younger uh, Jews in the, in the U.S. and other places are actually protesting against it. They have been from day one. But we have what we have at the moment. Uh, and very much so, uh, hoping that uh, this will stop. Now, Iran launched its 500 missiles, and the first reports were coming in that uh, actually there weren't too many civilian casualties. There's a reason for that, uh, primarily because Iran is hitting uh, government buildings, military bases, and economic uh, industrial targets. Uh, there's the Nevatem base. Uh, where uh, F uh, F-35s are stationed, and that base has gotten hit hard. Uh, out of the 500 or so missiles that have been launched, uh, if you watch the videos, you can see that Iron Dome is just absolutely overwhelmed, and it's taken out maybe 1 in 10, uh, maybe 1 in 6, somewhere between that, depending on the video you're watching. Some videos, they're just not taking out anything. Uh, and these missiles are coming in. They're not really heavy warheads. Uh, they've had some videos of the craters they're creating. They're not, you know, something that's going to take out a uh, 2,000 pounder. Uh, or in, th in this case, uh, 2,000, uh, be about 1,000 kilos. They're not that big, but there's a lot of them. And there's a lot of, fa there may be some fake warheads coming in, but either way, uh, Iron Dome was way overwhelmed. Uh, it, it handled... Uh, Gaza's occasional uh, rockets uh, pretty well. It's not handling Iran. And, and Iran has well over 20,000 uh, missiles, if not more. Uh, that may be upwards, uh, uh, well over, upwards up to uh, 50,000. That is longer range missiles that can actually reach Israel. Now, short range missiles to hit the American bases and the British bases all up and down the Persian Gulf, they probably got well over 100,000 missiles that can do that. Uh, and three missiles have landed in a U.S. base uh, at the Baghdad airport. And let's remember one thing. Baghdad has said multiple times, leave. We don't want you here. Leave. You know, supposedly this is a democracy and, uh, you know, uh, well, it's, it's rules-based. It's not law-based. And the rule is that uh, the U.S. told them to go bugger themselves. We're not leaving. So, there you go. Screw you. We'll do whatever we want. You're occupied. Uh, that's what empires, uh, especially these extraction empires, do. 
which is the Western model of empire, the extraction empire. We come into your country, we don't help, we don't make you part of us, uh, we don't lift you up, we do nothing but uh, push you down and then extract everything that you have for ourselves. And you can go screw yourself afterwards. Um, you know, even if you throw us off, it'll be, uh, you'll be uh, delayed back economically and culturally and socially by decades, if not by centuries. That has been the American and that, uh, the Western European, Central European approach to colonies for the last four or five hundred years. Just take a look around. Um, that, that's just how it is. So, uh, with Iran launching, let, let's see, first couple things to consider. Uh, more than likely, Iran got the green light from Russia, and then Iran got the green light from China, which means that China and Russia are now willing to escalate, seriously escalate. The U.S. is sending uh, an airport, uh, aircraft carrier. Now, for those who don't know, big U.S. aircraft carriers carry 5,000 uh, sailors. That's right, 5,000 sailors on that one big chunk of metal, uh, plus the surrounding warships and the uh, escadron that are there to defend the aircraft carrier. Now, you don't have to sink an aircraft carrier. All you got to do is do a good enough penetration on the airstrip above, and it can't do crap. It can't carry out its mission anymore because it can no longer uh, lift off planes. It can no longer land planes. All that an aircraft carrier can do at that point, once it's been damaged or dead, is turn around and find the nearest port that can repair an aircraft carrier. Ain't that many of those types of ports for a ship that big. So all you need to do is get one pretty damn good uh, sized uh, lucky hit on, a, on the uh, runway. And the runway is the length of the aircraft carrier and the width of the aircraft carrier. So it's not that beyond range and difficulty. But that's, uh, so that, that's the problem with American aircraft carrier, anybody's aircraft carriers for that matter. Uh, aircraft carriers are now data technology against any peer or near peer rival anywhere, uh, particularly one that can't be sunk because he's on land. It's got long range missiles. And the longer range missile, the less effective the aircraft carriers because the planes can't go that far out before they have to be refueled or before they get bingo fuel, which means they don't turn around and go back right off the bat. They're not coming back. They have to find another air base. So, U.S. Send, oh, and the U.S. is also sending Marines. I don't got to do that much to help. But they're also sending the Tennessee National Guard. Uh, it's going to be deploying to Israel. That's rather ironic, considering Tennessee just got raped. Uh, not as ass raped as uh, North Carolina did. And I lived quite a long time in North Carolina. So I know how the East Coast can get it from uh, hurricanes. Uh, but this apparently was like the one in 150, 200, 300 year hurricane. that took, well, I don't know who counts those up, but uh, Eastern North Carolina is just gone. Uh, and I've seen it gone, but this, from the videos, I, I mean, I lived there for some hurricanes, but from what I'm seeing on uh, videos right now, it is gone. And the fact that the Biden administration, the U.S. government, has shown the people of the former Confederacy, hopefully uh, it may soon be the future Confederacy, that they don't really give a damn because guess what? We have no more money for you. And no more help for you. But Ukraine is going to get another eight and a half billion, plus another two billion of Biden scraping up somewhere else. And here's a clown world moment. Go look up Kamala Harris's economic plan. Black and white, written out, 520 billion, that's will that be, billion dollars for Ukraine. While well, you're bankrupt, while well, your cities are collapsing, hear me, America? Well, your southeastern states have just been raped, ass-raped, by a hurricane Category 4 when it landed. You're not worth the money. But Ukraine, because of the kickbacks and the big chunk for the big guy and all his little guys around him, that's where the money's going. And if you dare criticize it, by the way, when the Democrats steal the elections, and they will, uh, they don't outright kill Trump uh, before that. Uh, when you criticize it, if uh, Hillary Clinton has her way, that's going to be punishable by a criminal, uh, criminal offense, and you're going to get to sit in jail for criticizing anything the U.S. government does, particularly for you know the uh, kickback scheme, money laundering scheme called Ukraine. Uh, 
so there you go, folks. Keep talking about your freedoms are being defended somewhere overseas. They're not being defended overseas. They're being stripped from you in your own country by your own politicians. We've got you so brain dead and so been dazzled looking overseas about, oh, they're fighting for our freedoms. No, they're not. They're fighting for the dollars that my lobbyists are putting in the pockets of American politicians. Welcome to reality. It sucks. And it's going to get even worse unless you actually face reality, the average American voter. Um, so, again, Tennessee needs help. Uh, it has flooding. It's not as bad, thankfully, uh, as North Carolina, but it got hit pretty hard. And the Tennessee National Guard, which would normally be helping out and doing everything it can, is going to Israel. Yeah, priorities, baby, and you're not it. You're the, you're the cash cow that gets to pay, work, pay, or eventually uh, suffer from the printed money, but you're not the priority. Maybe if the entire state of North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, Tennessee, each state got its own lobby together of citizens, never mind the senators, and go bought its own senators back plus every other senator. I don't say like the Israeli lobby has one person per member of Congress in the U.S., who knows, maybe you would probably get noticed a bit more by your representatives. But since you're not willing to pay them millions of dollars, you're not even second fiddle. You're, a matter of fact, not part of the band or the audience. You're sitting out there at the, uh, the servant's entrance begging to get in, have a peep, get a crumb off the table. Welcome to being uh, to knowing your place. I mean, that's that's what it is. I mean, it really is. And the vast majority of Americans do not want to face reality. Oh, no, 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 that's not what they want to do. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this, folks. You got any money and any future you want outside of this? Unless you're willing to do whatever it takes to do to get your own country back. And the vast, vast majority are not. Uh, believe me. Uh, if, when the rubber hits the road, they'll give up their guns. They'll do everything uh, they're told. Uh, and, and it'll be over. And that's and the federal government knows that in the U.S. And the federal government in, in uh, England knows that. And the federal government in Germany knows that. I mean, look, in England itself, they put a lot, they started putting people in jail for putting likes or for commenting uh, against uh, illegal migrants or migrants taking away apartments and jobs. I mean, England, clown world, number one. 75% of new jobs over the last, what, 15 years went to immigrants? Can, and consider how many immigrants aren't working. To immigrants, not to people who grew up and lived their lives in England, but to newcomers who haven't paid in the system, haven't done anything. And by the way, despise uh, the English who they live amongst. Oh, boy. Normally, there will be one hell of a spit in the eye. Uh, and I guess King Charles, I mean, look, look up history. Every King Charles in England has been a disaster. Number three is going to be the same or worse disaster. Especially with uh, Keir Steimer, who just seems hell-bent on, on a war with Russia. Well, just understand, Mr. Steimer. Especially with the U.S. stretched uh, in uh, the Middle East. Going to be fighting half the Middle East. Um, yeah, you're going to get hit. You're going to hit back. You don't have the capability to do anything to Russia. You do have nukes, but if you go down that route, there won't be in England. And there probably won't be a Scotland uh, and Wales anymore. Well, maybe it just hit south of the Hadrian's Wall. Uh, but the point is, there won't be in England left. You and your kids will go underwater. Actually, I don't know if he's even got any kids. Uh, the majority of these liberals and uh, leftists, they don't have kids. They don't give a damn once once they have, they're gone, because they don't have any legacy left anyways, except whatever they do in, in this life, good or bad. You know, it, it used to be, if you wanted to be the village elder, you had to have kids, or the city elder. Because that way, and grandkids, if you're old enough, because that way, you had an invested future. You had an investment in the future, because you had legacy. When you don't have all that, and that's the vast, vast majority of Western leaders, they don't give a damn when they're gone. When they're burning in hell for everything they've done, they really don't give a damn if your kids are dying or not. It's not their kids. They don't have any. They live for themselves and their, and their glory. Uh, or in, in, in glory. 
so there. I mean, but but you people are the ones that supported that. Whether or not you supported it actively or passively, but you supported that. There you go. Yeah, actions or inactions have consequences, just like voting does. So what can you do? Well, I mean, look, move to Russia, move to Brazil, get your money out, in one form or the other, gold, don't, don't do paper gold, God bless it. Uh, I love when people tell you to do gold, uh, or hold gold in the U.S. <clears throat> yeah, gold of 1932, that's when a G-man stood in every bank and went with you to your box and took out and confiscated all the gold coins and about a third of the uh, jewelry gold and gave you paper back. They've done it before, they'll damn well do it again, and the U.S. is not a law-abiding uh, country, it's a precedent country. So the legal precedent, once it's created, even if it goes against law, once the precedent is created, it can be retrograded and it'll definitely go forward. And since the U.S. government has confiscated gold once, it'll do it again. And if you own paper, that's even worse. If the economy crashes and the markets crash, you've got a chunk of paper. You don't have physical gold. You got claim on some physical gold on a gold mine or some other thing, but it's all paper. That's the whole point. It's all paper. When the shit hits the fan... That paper, that, you know, what, what can you do with it? No, I don't know. You could put it in a frame and hang it up on a wall. That reminds me, um, when I was uh, uh, director of supply chain in Halliburton, Eurasia, over Eurasia, uh, on our floor where all the directors sat, we had director of, of uh, finance. Uh, I won't name his name. Um, so he calls me over. He's like, stop, stop, stop. Come over to my office. I, I want to show you something. I walk in there, and I, he's got on his screen a photograph of a treasury bond from the Imperial Russian government in uh, 1914 uh, for so many gold rubles. Like, how much do you think we can make off this? I think it was like what, a thousand gold rubles. Like, um, nothing? Like, what do you mean, nothing? Uh, well, considering that uh, the debt was denied by the... Uh, by the Bolshevik government and then by the Russian government you know that's three governments since that's been issued because there's the, the uh, temporary government that was in power uh, provi uh, provincial uh, not provincial uh, well, temporary government that was in uh, power uh, and then after that the Bolsheviks grabbed power and then Russia came about after the collapse of the Soviet Union that's three governments since that's been issued and the last two said, no, we're not uh, bound by the debts of the Tsar's government. And, by the way, there was a French lawsuit back in the 90s at this point that uh, tried to win billions of dollars. And it failed. Uh, and, uh, and the World Court, uh, International Court said, no, it doesn't work that way. But he, he looks at me, uh, this director of uh, finance, what, what do you mean? But we, we're thinking we can get uh, the three, four billion dollars on this. Well, then I explained to him all that I just said to you. And the question that was unsaid, as his, uh, you know, you could see his soul collapsing. Uh, the question I said is, you know, if that was possible, why would somebody sell all that and not go get it himself? Hire a combat team of lawyers and let's go. They bought for something like, uh, what was it? Well over a couple million dollars. Uh, thousands of those printed treasury bills. And these are Halliburton's elite financiers and vice presidents. They're educated people. Like, seriously, nobody sat down and did a little bit of homework before you just dished out it. I want to shake the, uh, the hand of the guy that sold the scrap to him. Because, you know, anybody who's that stupid deserves to lose money. You got paper. Now, the point of this is the Russian government collapsed. Uh, the imperial government collapsed. And all that debt and gold that they owed on paper, treasury bills, it went away. Or war bills in this case. It went away. It's the same thing when you hold us. Any day that government in D.C. can go bye-bye or just go, mm, we renege on all our debts. 
And what are you stuck with? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You go bankrupt like everybody else. Uh, the only way to, to save that is to get your money into other jurisdictions, into other currencies, to spread your risk. And maybe get it into gold in countries that never confiscated gold. There's another one for you. Or buy property in other countries. That's your valuable property. Uh, a long time ago, a very uh, close friend of mine who's uh, Scottish by nationality uh, was telling me that uh, through his very rich English friends, Scottish friends, or the British elite, uh, so for the last two decades, they've been buying up antique cars, uh, art, and real estate. Because that's going to sort of save their fortunes. Not currency. Uh, holding gold in countries that are confiscated doesn't work. It's things like that that they've been invested in. Stuff that you can put in a bunker uh, and pick up after the war, you know. Uh, I'm not even talking about nuclear war, just regular war. So it doesn't get burned up. You drive in, you put a plant, a bunker underground, and you put your uh, antique uh, car in there. And then go pick it up after the war and go sell it on a market somewhere worldwide. And get your uh, cash back up. Well, that's the reality of it. That's what the rich do. And then they tell everybody else to, oh, buy paper. Buy paper. Paper doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Whether it, paper has numbers for dollars or euros on it, or paper has future asset purchases, or what have you. I mean, that's, that's just reality. Take my uh, advice for what it's worth. Don't take it. You know, it's up to you. Uh, it's no sweat off uh, my back. I'm not getting paid for that. Uh, <laughs> just say, you know. But if you do want to support me, by all means, please hit the like button. Let's begin with that. Uh, subscribe, please. Um, I'm, it, it's bad enough I'm getting shadow banned. Uh, so if you sup uh, subscribe, at least uh, you know, uh, let's everybody, let's me know that uh, I'm you know I've got an audience that wants to hear more, and I'm not wasting my time. And if you want to support me. Uh, apparently, Buy Me A Coffee has uh, backed off uh, or blocked me or whatever. Um, though I do have an old uh, U.S. bank account I was using. But uh, Patreon, uh, sign up Patreon. Uh, I would be very thankful. Um, and by the way, you, if you want me to cover any specific topics, uh, by all means, leave it in the commentary. Uh, I, you know, I, I appreciate all commentary. I read it all. It's not that much, unfortunately. <laughs> so it's not that hard to read at all. I do answer some of it. Um, if you want me, by the way, uh, for my uh, interview shows, if you want me to interview anybody in specific, um, by all means, let me know. And if you've got their contacts, also let me know. Uh, we'll reach out and, uh, and contact them. Um, but that, that's how it goes. Uh, you know, folks, I guess the... the, I guess the uh, Neocons or the Trotskites, who are now controlling both parties basically, are going to finally get their Iran war. And between the hurricanes, uh, the monkeypox version XXX uh, Fudgebacker edition, the uh, war with Iran, and maybe with uh, Russia, China, and everybody else, uh, yeah, kind of hard to hold elections. You know what I'm saying? And do remember that the Hezbollah has cells. Or if they don't have cells, the FBI will make them. They're good at things like that. Uh, in the U.S. to make those black swan events. Uh, so there you go. It's going to be a fun couple of weeks, months, or years. Or maybe even a decade coming up. So hope you stacked up on popcorn, soda, and beer. And, and, and not Budweiser. And none of the rest of that chemical crap. By the way, side note, um, you know, I went to college in the U.S., obviously, in the university. Uh, and, you know, when you get drunk off of that crab beer that Americans love to drink, ice cold and ice cold so that your throat doesn't feel the chemical swill that you're pouring down it. Um, and, you know, you, your hangovers are murder. I mean, your skull is like three times smaller in your brain. Your bone marrow hurts. Not to mention everything else. And, you know, I got stationed in Germany uh, at uh, Vilsack, uh, military base, Bavaria. And the first weekend I was there, 
uh, this other lieutenant uh, from the unit I was going into, plus two senior sergeants, took me out drinking. And we got slushed off of good German beer. And I wake up, and I'm expecting to be just as hungover uh, in pain as I've been in the U.S. so many times. And I feel great. Great. I got like a little echo of a headache somewhere. But I feel absolutely fine. Great. That's what real beer, real products mean. As opposed to that swill uh, that the vast, vast majority of American beer is. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a, uh, it's a cowboy on there, a farmer on there, a steel worker, or some uh, nut job dressing up as a woman tucking his uh, balls up or chopping them off or what have you. It's still chemical swill. It's not fit for uh, microbes, let alone human beings. Um, so, yeah, th there's my little rant on beer. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> so, all right, boys and girls, uh, have a good day. Keep up with the news. And everybody in uh, eastern North Carolina, my heart goes out for you because I, I know that state well. I've got friends out there, um, you know, it's shit. It's shit that the federal government doesn't give a damn about you. They give more damn about a coke-addled uh, nut job trying to start World War III in uh, Kiev than they give a damn about their own citizens. Let that be a life lesson. And then you draw your own conclusions off what needs to be done off that. God bless. Cheers.